Coming up, we take a road trip south, visiting some remote but amazing hidden coves, ideal for swimming and sunbathing, explore an abandoned town from its imposing position on the rugged coast, and reach the tip of Mani. Lots to come, so stick around. Today our adventures take us from our base in Lemeni right down to the tip of the Mani Peninsula. Roads around here are easy to drive and the coastal scenery pretty impressive. Our first stop of the day is Mezapos, a tiny village with around 30 inhabitants. It has a few coastal properties for holiday lets, a couple of cute but run-down streets and a small shop. You're probably thinking what's so special about this place? Well we think this stunning rocky cove gets that award. Whilst it has no beach and you have to sunbathe on the rocks, the crystal clear water is mesmerising and entices you in. It's off the beaten track and only a few locals seem to know it's there. Well, we all do now. It's a great place for some sun worship. Next stop is Jero Menlenas Beach. Its name means Old Harbour. It's a really picturesque village and one of the remotest in the Peloponnese. This lovely little fishing village has a smooth stone beach and I know I keep saying it but crystal clear water perfect for swimming. There are a number of small hotels and tavernas along the sea wall of the boat dock. As you would expect, fish and octopus feature heavily on the menus and it's a great place to get some afternoon shade with a drink watching the world go by. Park the car outside of the road because apparently there's like a abandoned town here. It's kind of right on top of the hill, but there's no signs of the town here. It looks kind of lived in, <laughs> but um, we'll walk down the road and see what we can find. Just around the corner, Vathia came into view with its striking position high on the hill. So there's nobody around at all. It's just uh, us and the crickets. It's quite weird, actually. I don't know much about the history of it. We'll probably try and do some research uh, when we get back, but just sort of like little side streets and nooks and crannies of buildings that have just, uh, just crumbling away, you know, before your feet. You have to watch where you are walking as well because the cows have also got around here and there's cow pats everywhere. From the limited information we could find, Vathia still has some 33 inhabitants, so it's not quite a ghost town. Where they are living, who knows, we didn't see a soul. Built in the 18th or early 19th century, it's a great example of ancient Mani dwellings. It's quite interesting though, because it's like, makes you think about who lived here, why did they leave, 
why has it turned out now that it's like falling apart and dilapidated? At some point, you know, it must have been quite a, an important town with the sort of buildings that are here. And the views are just absolutely stunning from this location. So it's just surprising that there's nobody here now. As we headed down to the southerly most point in Mani, the roads got narrower, but these coastal roads have just beautiful views of the rugged landscape. The great thing about hiring a car while you're away is that you can just stop over at any of these viewpoints and take in stunning views like the one behind me. It's absolutely amazing. The furthest point by car is a place called Caves of Hades. There isn't much to see here as it's quite barren, but there are some lovely inlets to settle down for some swimming or snorkeling. Our plan was to take the 45 minute walk to the lighthouse to get right to the tip, but it was incredibly hot that day and without any shade we wisely decided against it. Next time we head north up the Mani coastline and show you more cute towns, beaches and a mountain top lunch that was quite strange. So tune in next week for more from Greece and remember to subscribe so you get alerted to when our next video is ready. Thanks for watching, happy travels from the Memory Seekers.